And if you're watching on YouTube, you missed the first part of the show. And the reason you missed the first part of the show is because you didn't watch live on the Liberty Principal Facebook page, which is linked in the comments below. If you're still with us on the Facebook live stream, then you got to hear the glorious beginning to this show. I want to start off this show with a little promotion. It's not a self-promotion. I This is not my store. Agora.threadless.com I have put the link in the Facebook uh, uh, group chat. And as also in the in the Facebook uh, description, and I'm also going to put the link in the description for the YouTube video as well. Now, if you're listening on audio, go to is uh, is daily live, and you can get the notes, and uh, then you can find find the link to Agora. Or you, if you can remember, go to agora.threadless.com and look for this T-shirt. This T-shirt which is going to become the t-shirt that I wear for the Is Daily Monday show. I'd rather face the danger of a madman with a gun than empower the state to define what a madman is. I'm going to wear that to church. <laughs> That's a good call. That's a great call. Yes, that's a great that's a, call. Too, I should live stream it too. That's a, you definitely <laughs> see, should. See you should walk the in result. there with the with the selfie stick. With the phone oh yeah, on the end of the selfie I'm just stick. seeing all the reactions from everybody. <laughs> you know, right. I see who my future friends and are, and my my future <laughs> sever all tides with people are. <laughs> the ones who shriek, "You're gone!" Right. Yeah, history. <laughs> You're cut. But 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 the pastor shrieked, "He's gone! He's <laughs> out! He's here. out! <laughs> He's out of here!" So why don't we? Why don't we? What we're gonna do? We're gonna do something a little different here. We do have a call in number that you can see that one nine oh three two one eight two oh eight one. If you're watching on Facebook, you can call in. If you're watching on YouTube or listening on iTunes or Stitcher, don't try to call in. Nobody nobody's gonna answer. You know, you're just gonna wake the one true niz up in the middle oh, of Oh, you won't you won't wake me up, buddy. That'll go right to voicemail. <laughs> that will go right to right. and you can leave me a voicemail if you want, but chances are I'm gonna bulk delete that sucker. <laughs> Yeah, because I don't yeah, answer it when you're not live. Baby, bulk <laughs> but if you're watching live, uh, Niz is going to give a, a little bit of a presentation, and I'm going to give a little presentation afterwards. Then we're going to open up the line. So if you call beforehand, we're not going to answer. But if you call after, then we're going to answer. So uh, let, let's hit the bump for – we do have three segments planned. We have stories planned. I'm not sure if we're going to get to the other two segments. I guess we'll find out. But we're definitely getting to this segment. What are the big stories, the big headlines everyone else is focused on? And what, if anything, can we, who pursue the power to act without threat or action of physical force, learn from these stories? This is Newsfire. Where we set your news on fire. It's real easy to set this one on fire. It's like it easy. came pre-packaged with fire. So right, it was already engulfed when so we go got ahead, it. sir. All right, so I mean, in the wake of all this, uh, you know, the, the 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 shooting, the massacre, madness uh, that we've seen going on uh, for the past what three weeks now. We're heading into week three of heading this uh, three. the aftermath of the Florida shooting, the Florida murder. Um, and we're at the point now where legislators are starting to propose legislation. Enter uh, HR 50, what is it, 5087, right? Is the uh, gun grabber bill that they just put up? It's in uh, committee me... right now? No, it's 50, I, I see it right here. It's 5087. I see it in my notes. It's 5087. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> right. And uh, so this bill is in is in committee right now, which means that they're going to decide whether or not this thing is going to actually get to the floor and they're going to take a vote on it or not. Uh, this is uh, a bill that is brought to you by your local commiecrat and sponsored by your local commiecrat. Uh, but you also have to take into account some of the things that are being said, not only by Republicans, but also by President Trump himself. And uh, once you start looking at the big picture here and seeing what's going on, I, I, here's what I'll tell you. I honestly think that politicians – on both sides, on left and right, are starting to buy into their own bullshit, which is the you know the the bullshit that the prostitute media is spewing around. I really think that these guys forgot that Operation Mockingbird is like in full effect, and that the 
prostitute leftist media parrots and regurgitates the party line rhetoric because they're in lockstep with the leftists and the socialist segments of the Republican Party. I think they're actually really starting to believe their own bullshit. I'm convinced that if they try to move forward with this legislation and God forbid if they ever get the idea in their tiny little soy-soaked brains to go ahead with full-blown gun confiscation, they're going to be in for a bad time. Meanwhile, these uh, politicucks are busy patting themselves on the back and passing out attaboys. You know, the quote-unquote evil NRA has seen a huge surge in membership. Now, look, don't get me wrong. It's not that I think that the NRA actually has your back as a firearms owner or a Second Amendment supporter. But the average Joe doesn't really know that. They don't realize that the NRA is controlled opposition. They hear the big bad NRA and the evil NRA from the leftists. And so they think, oh, okay, these guys, uh, you know, they defend what I believe. But that, And that's besides the point. The point is that this surge in membership shows that contrary to the prostitute narrative, the, and the, the, the lingual diarrhea of their talking heads, the American people don't support this. Now, remember, these are the same known liars that said that the Hildebeest was a shoe in right up until the last second when she lost the 2016 election. So don't let them make you think that you're in the minority by supporting the Second Amendment or gun rights or firearm freedom or private firearm ownership because it's a lie. It's a fallacy. You are not in the minority. They are, which is why you're being inundated by their propaganda. It's why they're parading that Tide Pod eating little bobble-headed weenie hog all over your screen. It's why people's Twitter accounts are being shut down for supporting Second Amendment and for using certain hashtags. It's why uh, you know, if you're if you're an, uh, an activist and on Twitter uh, and you support Second Amendment rights, you're being labeled as a Russian bot. This is why, because they cannot have your dissenting opinion gaining public support in the public eye because then their entire narrative unravels. Here's the thing. I think if they move forward with this legislation, and again, it's H.R. 5087, go read it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. It's on congress.gov. Just go there or go to, you know, DuckDuckGo or uh, uh, it's, Yahoo or I, whatever. I've also included the full text of the bill in the article that I'll be presenting right after you're done, which is in the right, show okay, notes. So then, great. Uh, even better than go to istate.tv and, uh, and you can read H.R. 5087. For yourself. Don't take my word for this. Go read it for yourself. But I honestly think that if they move forward with this legislation, they're in for a bad time. It is not going to be pretty. The first time that, you know, the, that the cops go to some Marine vet's house, and, you know, I'm not talking I'm talking about the, the guy who served six tours uh, and, and flies the stars and stripes on a pole in his yard that he takes down at 6 p.m. every night and he puts it up at 6 a.m. every morning. The guy who has a framed constitution on the wall in his living room uh, and he reads the Bill of Rights every night before he goes to bed. Uh, the guy that, you know, even the neighbor kids refer to him as sir. Yeah, that guy. The first time that they go to him and take his firearm, it's going to be on national news. And and I don't mean like, yay, we did it kind of national news. I mean like in a Lexington and Concord kind of way. In a like a Christmas Addicts uh, kind of way. A shot heard around the world kind of way. These fools are playing with fire. And when you play with fire telling you right now man you better expect to get burned yeah now i'm gonna get my it's not a counter it's just a uh different it's not a well it's not a counter it it's just opinion? i'm looking at it from a different way so they called for common sense gun control legislation and they called you paranoid for suggesting that they were actually out to confiscate your guns. Do you guys remember that? I, I've been hit with that left and right because I've been aggressively going after the, the gun grabbers. I'm, I, I essentially, I call them cattle car guides. That's all they are to me. So they accused you of politicizing the Florida shooting 
tragedy. Now, mind you, they accuse you of politicizing the Florida shooting sad tragedy while they immediately called for political action. Hmm. I think that if you look up in Webster's, if Webster's was like truthful, uh, Webster's would show uh, po to, to politicize uh, leftist uh, definition to call for political action that the left disagrees with in the wake of some tragedy. That's politicizing. So they said, hey, hey, man, let's put politics aside and let's work towards creating common sense gun control legislation that will make our kids safe. Now, before I get to what 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 Niz has already revealed, the bill. I just want to say this first. Our kids are safe for the most part. They're not completely safe and they never will be completely safe. None of us will ever be completely safe. But there's no gun violence epidemic. So let's just take... Uh, th this is an excerpt from a study done by Northeast University. Since 1996, there have been 16 multiple victim shootings in schools or incidents involving four or more victims and at least two deaths by firearms, excluding the assailant. Of these, eight are mass shootings or incidents involving four or more deaths, excluding the assailant. Mass school shootings are incredibly rare events. In research publishing later this year, Fox and doctoral student Emma Friedel found that, on average, mass murders occurred between 20 and 30 times per year, and about one of those incidents, on average, takes place at a school. Friedel and Fox used data collected by USA Today, the FBI's Supplementary Homicide Report, Congressional Research Service, Gun Violence Archive, Stanford Geospatial Center and Stanford Libraries, Mother Jones, Every Town for Gun Safety. None of these are, by the way, friendly. Those two are not friendly to mm. your ability to own the basic tools of self-defense. And an NYPD report on active shooters. Their research also finds that shooting in incidents involving students have been declining since the 1990s. Bear that in mind when you see the little trolley von trolls with their smug little suburban entitlement on their faces crying out for the for the epidemic never again never again what never again wounded knee never again the wilmington massacre what do you mean never again you want to talk about death at a massive scale let's talk about how government guns have been used to take out unarmed people. You see, there's no gun violence epidemic. And outside very rare instances, such as what recently happened in Florida, our schools and our kids are safer than they've been in decades. The only real threat is the garbage that they're teaching in the schools. That's far more of a threat to them. But along comes the Democrats using the bodies of dead children and the tears and shrieks of teen gun-grabbing activists to introduce what for them is common sense gun control. This is their answer, their idea of common sense gun control legislation. Perhaps they believe that now, now is the time to push for the final solution. Yeah, I get the reference. I know exactly what I'm doing when I use that phrase. Perhaps they are right. Perhaps the land of the free, the home of the brave, has been sufficient efficiently pacified through decades of authoritarian school indoctrination. Like I said, the, the, the most dangerous part of school is the school itself. That's the biggest threat to your children. The Democrats, with the co-sponsorship of 150-plus Democrat members of the House of Representatives, have, have introduced the bill that Niz talked about, H.R., 5087, a bill that would essentially ban the sale and criminalize possession of, of just about all semi-auto rifles 
and many shotguns. And they even created a list of rifles and shotguns on their prescription list. And this list, by the way, and it's 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 in this uh, it's in the the article that I'm that I'm it's reading from, that I wrote. It's huge. It's a huge list. In other words, folks, their idea of common sense gun control, their idea of not politicizing mass murder is to introduce a bill that would create felons of tens of millions of people that would theoretically set forth a chain of events that could involve sending hundreds of thousands of armed enforcers to go door to door and collect your firearms from you all in the name of addressing an academic, an epidemic that doesn't even exist. This bill, for me, is a naked assault on liberty. It's a, it's a bold attempt to hasten the arrival of the statist progressive dream, the creation of a police state that will do all of our thinking for us, else we face another round of terror in the spirit of Stalin or a Mao. And if you don't believe me, read the frickin' bill for yourself. And 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 at the end of that bill, I list, it's in the bill itself in the beginning, but I list it at the end. I want, I want the full gravitas of the situation to hit you. Go through the full bill, and then, and then go through that list of enemies of liberty, the enablers of a police state who would risk civil war to hasten the demise of what liberty remains in this land. This is why this episode is called what it's called. This is Common Sense Coup. That's what we're talking about. We're talking simply about a common sense coup. And with that, that's it, man. That's 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 my that's my presentations. That is <laughs> that's what I have to say so far. Uh, at least somebody read the effing thing, Jacob said. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're, you're going to have blood shoot out your eyeballs if, if, you, if you actually do read the thing. But I really, I, I just, just I, I think it would be a great exercise if you went through it and then you read the names. And then you understand the full gravitas of what these people have put their names on. This to me, this is like, this is... I don't know if you guys know anything about Oliver Rock Cromwell, the the English Civil War, uh, but they had to decide Charles the First were they going to kill him, and a bunch of people they put their name they put their name on the order that Charles the First would be executed. They put their name on it, and uh, later on they were held accountable. After after uh, Cromwell died, and he handed off his, uh, you know, he was supposed to free them from the kingship, and eventually became a king himself. Although called a Lord Protector, not a king, handed it off to his feckless son. He didn't last long, and uh, then once once Charles II took power, then well, revenge. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you folks that put your name on this bill. You're setting yourself up for a scenario that, that might not be pretty for you in the long run because you pretty much let everybody know that you are absolutely for gutting this Second Amendment. And and you, and you anybody who listens to the show, you, you understand. I always say there's no rule of law. There's only rule of power. Well, rule of, rule of law is a form of power. It's, it's, it's ideational power. It's, it's only real insofar as you make it real. And, and what they're attempting to do is to knock down one of the checks on them increasing their power. And their increase of power comes from their ability to fully monopolize their advantage of force. And to that end, <laughs> they are attempting to fundamentally gut this ideational power, this idea of the Second Amendment. As, as this this check against their aggression and honestly I don't know you, you you have a different outcome than I do or you have a you have a different thought about what's gonna happen than I do so tell us why I should be I should be like this is no big thing this is cool well I'm not gonna say it's no big thing I mean you, you know if uh, uh, if if we do get that uh, that Christmas addicts moment that shot heard around the world moment 
Um, I don't think uh, I don't think that anything good is going to come is going to come from that. It's not like uh, you know that's going to happen, and all of a sudden we're going to be you know ushered into this uh, this utopic bastion of liberty. On the contrary, it's uh, that this this move and this legislation, and if they go forward with this, I mean this has the uh, this has the potential, and I know people have said a lot in the past. Oh well, you know there's going to be a second American Revolution. This is actually something that could have the potential to to spark something like that, uh, to spark something like that off. Uh, you know, I mean, not not just but, on the. I mean, I mean, I know in your in you had mentioned about you know going door to door, but it doesn't even have to go that far. I mean, I let's say let's say I, that you I, know I, you're 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 a Second Amendment supporter, and your neighbor is one of the you know the 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 leftist soy boys that uh, that that is uh, you know he goes to sleep every night and he hugs his picture of Chuck Schumer as he lays down in bed at night. Uh, he says his prayers to Nancy Pelosi before he closes his eyes, and he calls and says, "Hey, I know my my neighbor is a is a Second Amendment supporter, and I know he's got one of those guns that's on that list." And they come to that guy's house knocking on his door, and uh, and and it goes horribly wrong for them. Then I mean something like that. Uh, it's it's not going to be good for liberty all around. What it's going to do is it's going to plunge plunge the entire nation into chaos and war, and uh, that's not where it's not where anybody who who who's liberty minded <laughs> really wants to go because you're not gonna you're not gonna get liberty from that. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I just let me start off with this. Who who are they going to attack? Who are they going to lash out against? There's no army occupying. There's no consolidation of force for them to target. There's no clear battles for them to win. They don't have a clear definition of uh, territories. Everybody in this territory is on Team A. Everybody in that territory is on Team B. There's none of that. I mean, like the Civil War was was kind of bloody because, you know, had brother against brother, but but nowhere near what you have here because what you have here is you have neighbors living side by side that, you know, two or three of them are on this side, two or three of them on that side. It's I, where where do you focus? Well, they would handle how, it like how an does that revolution they would, happen. They would handle it like Right, they would handle it like an insurgency. That's how that's how it would be handled. It would be handled exactly like what they're doing in uh uh, what they've done in Iraq and what they continue to do in the Middle East, that's how it would be handled, just like an insurgency. I mean, it wouldn't be uh, clear defined. The, the, the clear defined side would be people who kowtow and goose step to the demands of the government and people who uh, who believe in firearm freedom and uh, and who, who won't. <laughs> I like what Jacob LaBelle says, New Salem, which has got guns now. Yeah. <laughs> right. So... From my perspective, I don't really think that there's going to be a war. There's going to be a civil war. There's going to be a great upheaval. I kind of thought maybe there would be. I think, well, first off, let's be clear. The chances that this bill goes anywhere are slim to none. Slim. Right, but right. don't it's kid yourself. This is, this bill's going to come up. And it's already come up and it'll keep coming up. The gun grabbers are never going away. They're going to keep putting stuff out there over and over and over. Every time there's any shooting that occurs, there's going to be, now they got a new formula. Their new formula is, especially when kids are involved, find the kids. All they, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy now. I mean, I could just imagine, like, as soon as the shooting happened, I could imagine the operatives that immediately would comb all the social media sites looking for all the kids in that school and figuring out which kids were the anti-gun political activists, finding those kids, getting them out there. And, and in this case, they got lucky because they got a kid that, uh, I mean, he was already doing this kind of stuff. I'm not going to say his name, by the way. Screw that guy. Uh, <laughs> and, and, so they Bobblehead. Now they, Just call him Bobblehead. So now they found a new tool. I mean, I've had, I had a conversation with somebody who's a pretty, I mean, they're not a gun enthusiast, so that's, I'll, 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 I'll offer that caveat, if you will, but still, pretty staunch supporter of the guns, and and their response to seeing these kids was, well, maybe, maybe we should, 
Maybe we should think about, you know, some of these guns that are just too dangerous. Until I sat down with them and I talked to them. I was like, what are you talking about? There's 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 no epidemic. There's there's no freaking epidemic. And I sat with them and but they were responding emotionally and it happened to be a woman. And I think a lot of women, because of our culture and how women are, whether it's a result of culture, biology, or whatever it is, women tend to be more nurturing. They want to protect the vulnerable. And, uh, and you get these kids there and they're crying. And <clears throat> all, they're, all they want to do, all they want to do is protect kids from getting killed. That's all they want to do. Are you against protecting kids? Are you against stopping kids from being killed? That's... That's an emotional appeal that that is that is working. It's hitting a lot of people. They're they're not thinking critically. They're not stopping to ask, is this is this for real? Is this hyped? And like you said, you know that Operation Mockingbird. You got the the whole party press, the progressive party press lined up and and I'm telling you this is going to happen again. Especially you know the operatives, whoever was sitting behind their computers, and I have, I have little doubt that this is what happened. As soon as the shooting happened, people immediately began to look for the kids that they were going to bring on the shows to trot there, out actually, the dead bodies. Actually, something, body, something so happened. Speak. Something happened. Uh, I don't. Know, I think it was the end of last week. Uh, something happened that was not on the media, got, got no attention whatsoever uh, from the media, from the press, from anyone, really. Uh, and that was that uh, Trump had hosted uh, some of these kids that were um, that were not uh, in the limelight here, like uh, the bobblehead and his uh, and that's two other dudes uh, that are that are his buddies, you know, his his right hand man that you always see there with the shaved head. I don't uh, care who they are. Listen, they're just right. Uh, so, so anyway, so Trump, Trump hosted some guides. of the guides. He he hosted some of the other kids uh, that were that were in. Uh, one of them was uh, was was a girl that was actually wounded uh, and spent time in uh, in intensive care, and uh, they hosted her at I think it was a dinner or, or meet and greet. I'm not really sure what it was, uh, but they had gone on and they were definitely not anti Second Amendment kids. I mean, the things they were saying were were. were uh, were things that were in support of the Second Amendment rather than, you know, oh, we need more gun control and we got to take these guns away. They were pointing out these failures of the uh, of, of the administration and failures of the system rather than pointing toward the gun as the culprit. And uh, you definitely did not see that on the on the mainstream whatsoever. That was nowhere to be found. No, because the mainstream media is not delivering you the news. They're delivering you the thoughts that you should right, have. They're the prostitutes. They are the prostitutes. The, I call them the progressive party press, the PPP. Man, that's what they are. They're, they're the, the, the progressive government party press. That's, that's who they are. So, yeah, they're pushing, they're pushing the narrative. But I don't think that, that the I, – I don't think the response – and, and 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 let me get why I feel like you're not going to see this resistance that you think you're going to see. That if somebody shows up, you know, I, first off, this bill isn't going to pass. What is going to pass? They're they're going to expand background checks. Uh, they may actually pass some sort of legislation. I don't know necessarily that they will, but they may potentially pass some sort of legislation like other states have done, like uh, what Washington State uh, specifically, Oregon is another, where you could basically call the police and tell them that somebody is a threat and they'll show up and they'll take your guns. Uh, so if, uh, if they show up, with with a bill like that, and then they show up. I don't think anybody's gonna. I think they're gonna just hand over the guns, and I don't think that there exists a network of people who are committed to show up at that person's door and say no, 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 no. You're gonna have to go through us. I mean, I think that's the most effective way to 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 nip this in the bud, so to speak. But I don't think it's gonna happen. And one of the reasons I don't think it's gonna happen is because. And this is the uncomfortable position for me. The people on the gun rights side are also big-time law and order folks. 
they they've got thin blue line stickers on their trucks right next to their Molon labels. I mean, this is a running joke for a lot of us. You got Molon label on one side, you got the thin blue line on the other side. Who do you think makes this bill possible? Who makes gun control laws possible? It's the police. I'm not saying, you know, police are all bad and let's throw them all out and let's say horrible things about the police. I'm saying, dude. You're saying that it's not going to be Chuck Schumer coming to your door to collect those guns is what you're saying. Right. And I'm saying, look at the police with a much more critical eye than you ever have before. Because at the end of the day, without the police, doesn't matter what wishes they write on paper, none of those wishes come true. It's got to be the police that make those wishes come true. And the other, you know, like, I, I, I don't think that they're going to do the, you know, I, I, I put that in for a bit of a dramatic effect because I, I, I believe if they thought they could get away with it, they would absolutely go door to door. They would do it tomorrow if they thought they could get away with it. The only reason they don't is because of the reality of power. Because if they realize, if they if they actually started to do a concerted effort to go door, door to door, you might actually see a violent response to that. Right. You might what encounter resistance. Do, it's like I I was listening to a show the other day. I'm not going to say exactly what it was because it's a show that I really like. And I, I think they were wrong about something. And they were talking about uh, ghost guns and 3D printing to guns. And they're saying, you know, Co- Cody Wilson with his 3D printed ghost gun that he pretty much ended the gun control debate. No, he didn't. Uh, what he ended, I won't say he completely ended, but you could argue what he ended was the government's ability to control the distribution of tools of self-defense among people, whether it was legal or not. But what what he didn't end was the moment that you have to use that gun. And <laughs> if you shoot someone, it's going to be really difficult for you to avoid having the police involved. So once you use that gun in self-defense and it's, it's, it's on the list, that's when you get nailed. When, when they're investigating you for something which is totally unrelated to guns and they find your guns, that's when they're going to nail you. It's another tool in the tool chest to target you. And that's the most effective way that this gun control legislation is going to happen. And then, like you said also, it's also going to be that that isolated... If, if they pass these types of bills that are... The laws in uh, Washington and Oregon, somebody doesn't like you. All they got to do is call the cops up and say, you're dangerous. You're a fundamentally dangerous person. And Donald Trump, what did he do? He gave fuel to that fire. He gave a possibility to that scenario. Right. What did he say? He basically that? said, you're, you're guilty until proven innocent, and let's, uh, let's take the guns first. And, uh, I mean, I don't understand what's happened to – what in the world has happened to the concept – and, and this is this this is I mean this is kind of a little bit off the topic a little bit, but it still ties in with all of this. What has happened to the concept of innocent until proven guilty? We just recently saw all this uh, all this stuff going on with uh, with Hollywood and with politicians, where there's all these accusations being thrown around, and just the mere accusation can destroy an entire career, can can obliterate an entire life, just. The accusation, not a conviction, not a sentence, not proof, evidence that this was actually done, just the accusation. And now we're moving this into the realm of, of firearms here with, with Trump's statements uh, earlier. That was earlier today that he said that, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Just today. So earlier, now we've moved into this realm with of, of firearms now, and, and that pushes this into the realm of criminality now. Now you're a criminal at the mere accusation of being a criminal as per the president's own words. Let's take the guns first and then to No, Mr. President, that is not how it's supposed to work. You are supposed to have to prove that I am guilty. I'm not supposed to have to prove my innocence. You are sub- The burden of proof is on the state. It's not on me. The burden of proof is for you to prove that I am guilty, not me to prove that I'm innocent. This is insane. Where has this concept been lost? 
Fear is the mind killer. If you're watching on YouTube, you don't get that. I mean, well, if you're a Dune fan, you probably get it. But uh, it's it's how our show opens on the Facebook. We have a two-minute warning segment during which I do my promotions. And uh, it, it begins with uh, fear is the mind killer. And the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And, and that's what's going on here. And they're drumming up fear and people... People are constantly willing to trade their liberty for security. And, you know, as the saying goes, when you trade your liberty for security, you end up losing both. <laughs> but but people, they're just thinking emotionally or rationally. And, and you know, that's, that's one of the problems. This is why I'm kind of skeptical about what the... The, the rebellion, if you will, the pushback, if you will, for the guns will be. Donald Trump. See, I have a, I, I have a little bit more faith. I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's I, – I don't know what it is uh, in my, you know, my, my personal psyche that I have a little bit more faith in law enforcement and military um, as far as you know, not enforcing these – now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that there's not going to be goose-stepping Gestapo that, that are more than happy to go banging door-to-door – uh, to, to, to rip people out of their homes and take them out in the street in the rain in front of their children. I, I don't get me wrong. I don't, I'm not saying that there are they already those do it because those, those guys definitely, definitely exist. But I think that there's a line, there has to be a line somewhere that like that, that, you know, these men won't cross. You know what I mean? I, I, I know, especially with, especially with military service members that have put their life on the line for these, I, ideals whether or not these ideals are are um uh, are palpable or not uh is a debate for another another time but they have put their lives on the line in their mind in support of these ideals and then to come home and watch their government destroy those ideas i think there's a line that just you know, like this far, no further. You go further than this, and I'm out. I'm I'm not I'm not dealing with this. I'm not doing, uh, having anything to do with this. And I I don't I just I have this. Maybe it's just me being hopeful. I, I, very, I very well could be uh, that it's just me, my my hopeful nature, and wanting to see the the better part of people rather than the the ugly gritty part of of other people. Uh, but I just have this feeling that if, if if something like that were to happen, let's say they pass this bill and and you know they're like, oh great, me <laughs> now we got our foot in the door, and then next year it's a little more, next year it's a little more, uh, and and then finally they're at the point where you know all firearms are illegal and it's a uh, it's a felony offense and any type of uh, resistance is death. I, I don't know that I would say unequivocally that all law enforcement or all ex-military would be down with that or would be in support with that. I think you'd get a lot of guys that would have, a, there would be a lot of pushback uh, against that. There, I think there would be a lot of resistance to that. Yeah, they're, Could not be gonna, they're not going to send out people door to door to confiscate your guns. If they did that, then your scenario kind of plays itself out. There's a lot of people, a lot of cops, a lot of military folks that, are just not going to do that. But there's a lot will that will. I mean, if, if you don't think that cops will confiscate your guns, if you don't think that the National Guard will confiscate your guns, you might want to Google uh, uh, New Orleans. What what the frick was the name of the hurricane? Katrina. Uh, hurt, Katrina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Google New Orleans Katrina gun confiscation. They went door to door, and they were taking guns away from people in the, it, it, right after a disaster, at a time when you need guns most, they were going out, and there were they, they, there there were there were people, there were cops, and there were uh, national guardsmen that were more than willing to go around and collect those guns. Believe you me, there's 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 more than enough of these people out there, and you know, as as for people joining the military because they think they're fighting for freedom, maybe that's true for some. I don't think that's true for most. I think most people join the military to have opportunities. You know, if I do my time for a certain period of time, I get college education or I get training or whatever it might be. It's 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 mostly for some advantage that they they might experience, which I you know doing you know working for your own advantage isn't necessarily wrong but the, even even among the people that 
in your scenario won't go out. We're not going to send them out. But I, but those same people who won't go knocking door to door and won't drag you out in the middle of the night and throw you out in the rain, uh, most of these people, they will when 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 they show up at your door for something unrelated or they show up at your door because they're some sort of PFA or something yeah they'll they'll do their duty they'll report you they'll document it they'll dot the i's and cross the t's they'll do their job so <laughs> so i don't know i i i i mean the the, the incremental plan is working just fine but that being said there is hope. And it's not necessarily <coughs> in resisting, certainly not re, uh, necessarily resisting head on the, the, you know, the gun confiscation, the gun threat. Uh, I mean, to a certain extent, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my part such as I can. I, I believe very much in the reality of power. And I think of power as uh, power is simply the ability to act and influence the action of others. So in that vein, there are four spheres of influence. There's force, there's ideational, there's social, and then there's demonstrable influence. I'm working very hard on the social front, on the social shaming front. And I am, I am doing my bit, and it might be a drop in the bucket. It might not be any good. It's just, you know, my, my stoics approach is what can I control? Be excellent where I can control such as, such as I can. And so in that sphere, I feel like I can be excellent in personally assuring that gun grabbers understand what garbage they are, what cattle car guides they truly are, how vile, disgusting, vulgar, and subhuman they truly are, to even imagine that they should somehow help a, an already powerful nation state consolidate even more monopoly of force and they think that the outcome is going to be anything but horrible once that nation state has that full consolidation right. of power so and and, that, and, a, and a practical application of what you're talking about right now are the sheriffs uh, in Broward County the Broward cowards that were out there cowering behind a stairwell while these kids were getting massacred they didn't even want to go in I I have theories about that, which I won't get into because I'll sound like a crazy man and I have absolutely no proof <laughs> of my crazy theories. You, you got to pull out your tinfoil hat out from underneath the, the desk there. And yes, that's what I'd be doing. <laughs> and and I, I don't think it's a darn bit of good. Even if I'm right, even if I'm totally right, even if I had total proof, I don't think it would be doing a, a darn bit of good. I think the most effective thing I can do to at least try to slow down the push towards uh, legitimizing, uh, limiting an individual's ability to own the effective means of self-defense, tools of self-defense, uh, I think the most effective thing I can do is show so social shaming. So that, that's what I concentrate mostly on. But, but there is the, the whole coercive enterprise model relies on delivering a product and a service at a cost-effective way. Whether it's real or imagined, it doesn't matter. If it's perceived to be cost-effective, you're getting something for what you're sacrificing. And I believe that there are technologies emerging today that are enabling people to experience alternatives, voluntary, free association alternatives that you can, you can enjoy the products and the services that you thought you could only get from coercive enterprises for 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 much less of a cost and more you know a, a better product and that that ultimately is what will turn the table if if the table is ever turned and and I'm not sure I've said this in multiple shows I'm not sure it remains to be seen what what is fundamental human nature and what is conditioned human nature is it are human beings conditioned through millennia to always call for a king or is this just something that's fundamental in our very essence that it's not going to be out of us anytime soon I, I don't have any idea and I don't really care all I know 
within my Stoics perspective, you know, be excellent in the areas that you can control. I'm working, as far as guns are concerned, I'm working on social shaming on one front, but on the coercive enterprise uh, front, I'm working on uh, highlighting, uh, sharing, demonstrating, and doing it myself uh, as much as I can and working towards doing it more and more, uh, using products and services outside of the coercive enterprise model and demonstrating to others that it, it is effective, that, that you can have, for instance, uh, security without a coercive enterprise model. Okay. Sure. I can't. Makes sense. Oh, thought I lost you there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm still okay. with you. So, still with you. So, J Jacob says, wait, Paul, are you actually saying I can affordably purchase private? And then it's an S. I don't know what you mean by S. Private S. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you can uh, afford right now. Uh, there are things that the course of enterprise model still has an advantage over uh, voluntary free association models, which I think is going to change more and more as things go forward. So I put my hope in, in the shifting of the reality of power on the demonstrable front first and foremost, and from the demonstrable front, you'll start to see some social influence start to come into play. And because, you know, like, wow, these people are living a cool life. They're doing great things. And that's cool. I want to be part of that. Uh, yes. Affordable private protection. Yes. Yes. Right now you can afford uh, uh, affordable. Uh, can you can afford affordable? No. You can afford <laughs> private protection to a right. certain degree. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I'll just say that... Uh, if you have an AR or a shotgun and it's in your bedroom, it's a much more effective uh, uh, tool of self-defense than picking up the phone and calling the police. Although it doesn't make you right. a Superman. So you could still be gotten if you have a shotgun and or a rifle. But, but yeah, it's, you have a better chance with that than you do picking up the phone and calling the police because they're going to arrive just in time to... Uh, you know, draw the chalk line around you and document what happened. <laughs> right. By then, right. it doesn't put the matter. Little, put the little number tags around the evidence. Yeah, so so I, I, I think I'm taking a pragmatic approach. People Sometimes people see what I do, and they're like, oh, you're just reacting emotionally. Well, yeah, I'm emotional. I'm, I do get genuinely ticked off at the gun grabbers. I, I do actually find them pretty reprehensible. But... I'm acting on it because I actually believe it's the most effective strategy that I can carry out. I'm not going to be calling my congressman anytime soon because the legislation that they write can be undone in a heartbeat. Or the legislation that they write on the surface might seem like they're actually helping me, but they slipped in some stuff that is actually hurting. <laughs> so I don't know. You have to write a 2,000-page uh, uh, bill. And then, and then what happens? You know, I just read a story recently. They're talking about the, oh, well, you know, they passed the wonderful Trump tax cuts. Everybody's happy about the wonderful tax Trump tax cuts. But the warning was, well, great. Now you pass the legislation. Now the, really, now the real battle begins. Regulators. Because now the regulators <laughs> write exactly how that bill is going to be carried out. And they right. have a lot of power to make a lot of decisions. So what seems good at first might not be might might, might not be good in the end. So I, I mean I don't know where you're at, but for me, my two fronts, social shaming and keep plugging away at 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 throwing out the if you go to iState.tv, you'll see demonstrable uh, influence at play. I'm I'm showing you most of my stories. I I have some political stories. I have I focus on world news. I specifically really follow like Rahava because it's kind of a stateless experiment. So it's kind of important for me to pay attention there. What's going on for good and for ill. Uh, but but most of what you see there is actually tech stuff. It's 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 and, and a little weird because we need a little respite from 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 the drama. But most of it's tech stuff. Like I covered today, the story of uh, uh, the actually two different stories. They're developing using nanoparticles ways to effectively combat 
bacteria and viruses. <laughs> Jacob said, what is Aleppo? <laughs> That's, that's that's in the mix of all that over there. What's going on in Syria? <laughs> truly, truly hideous. I mean, what happened in Syria today? A, a Parkland event happened in Syria. But you know what? It's okay because it was an American bomb. It was a bomb from an American jet, so it's okay. So 25-plus civilians were killed. I don't know how many of them were kids, but, uh, yeah, Parkland happened. But, but, but it's okay. Nobody's calling for bomb control. <laughs> there, no, nobody's <laughs> calling for the government to be. Yeah, I was, I was having a debate with somebody, uh, one of the gun grabbers on Twitter, and he was, he was saying, you know, listen, man, I'm, I'm for demilitarizing everything. You know, I, I want the government to, you know, cut the defense spending and stop killing all these people overseas and. And I'm like, dude, if your plan is to disarm everyone but the government first, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> you, you, you don't get it. You have this weird, unnatural trust in people who have a decided advantage in power across multiple spheres of influence. And you somehow believe that they won't, they won't abuse that power. I boggles it's the mind. It's this fairy tale. It's this fairy tale that uh, that government is benevolent and has your best interests in mind. They don't. <laughs> it's as simple yes, as Jacob. I can put it. Right. They don't. They don't. They don't have your best interest in mind. I've I've recommended the show multiple times. This this the uh, series. You know what? Let me. I'm I'm gonna try and find it. I want to drop the link in here. Cause, cause I actually I created a playlist for this. It's called the Fourteen Diaries of the Great War, and it is about the Great War, World War One, and it's the best war documentary that I have ever seen. It's it, it, hands down the best because it's not about it's different. It's different. It's not. It, it doesn't. It's not. You know. The. It's not told from the perspective. You know, where you have some, you know, some narrator giving you dates and occurrences and and little you know, bits and pieces of, of what happened, like straight out of a history book. It's it's notes and letters and actual correspondence. Oh, you there. Yeah. OK. Woo, you cut out for a second. OK, you're back. Good. Yeah, it's it's actually told from the perspective of the people who were who were in it the 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 folks uh, you know on the battlefield average, average joe the everyday the, guy the that every was average sent day to the full line. average joe yeah th th this is not if you want to learn about what battle was what no if you want to learn what it was really the like, emotional toll that it took on the people that were involved and and as you see things develop as you see it uh, unwind, you'll you'll see how 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 desperate the the great powers were to win a war and to throw everything into it, including you, to leave you uh, dead and buried on the side of the road if it was to the state's advantage. And people started to catch on to this, and people started abandoning ship you know regiments were leaving just abandoning their posts toward the end and and what saved them what what prevented them from fundamentally i don't know if they would have then or would have done it then then and there or or not i don't know uh what they were what they were experiencing was the cost of being part of the coercive enterprise was too high and the reward wasn't there until the americans arrived and they gave a de decided advantage to the Allies. They were able to defeat the Axis. And then you had the jingoism coming in, and everything was justified. All of the blood, all of the pointless death, all of it was justified and wrapped around patriotic songs over there. And meanwhile, on the other side, they were, they were drawn back to their coercive enterprises because they had someone new to hate because the Germans, man, They've been totally raped after that war, totally raped. And, of course, it sowed the seeds for the next war <laughs> and still sowing seeds for the wars that we're seeing today. 
So I recommend that you watch that documentary if you if you if you have any any desire to understand why it is that someone could come to the conclusion. I, I don't know if the coercive enterprise is no more. I don't know if it's possible, but I know that I can't endorse it. And this documentary really highlights why I can't endorse it, why I, to the best of my ability, I will try to avoid participating in it as much as possible. Whether, whether it's a achievable goal or not is irrelevant. I don't, I don't, I'm just... I'm just not going to do it. I just, I don't want to be part of it. That's it. That's it. That's it, man. That really is, that, that really is a great documentary though. I mean, if you, if you haven't seen it, um, you definitely should take some time and, and, and watch it. It will, I guarantee that it is completely different from anything that you've ever seen before about World War One, or or really any type of war documentary. Generally, they give you this, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, they tell you, you know, who fought who, when and where, and you know, oh, there was a hard fought struggle, and this this part, this side won. Uh, this is not not like that at all. Uh, it, it's you know, like I said, di it's letters, it's uh, diary entries. And it really, really shows you the the human toll uh, that 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 took, and and it also shows you the, the the changing attitudes, as Paul said. I mean, the people were really uh, they were on the Fired verge up. of completely giving up uh, oh, on right, on yeah. on the state, and uh, and and then that, like like again, like Paul said, and, until the Americans stepped in, and then uh, you know everything was right back to the, right they back rebooted. to normal. They rebooted. They got the yeah. reboot. And that's the yeah, question. The dead here. were dead, and the ones that weren't dead were happy they didn't have to go. And uh, everybody started cheering and waving their flags, and and that was it. But you know, I yeah. wondered after watching that. I mean, it, I I wonder if had the um, had had America not stepped in when it did. Let's say you know the 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 war continued on for you know a few more months or or a year or so. I wonder if the if if it would have. Uh, if governments would have had the support to continue, or if it would have gotten to the point where. They didn't have anybody that would even go to fight. They were running out of manpower, resources, and people willing to throw themselves back into the fray. So uh, they would have had to have uh, reached uh, some sort of uh, truce in which everybody would have had to have given a little and nobody's face would have been saved. In the end, the only people's faces who were saved were the the aristocrats among the allies the everybody else was humiliated and wiped out they didn't survive the purge that followed <clears throat> so there you have it i didn't think we were going to get to those other two segments <laughs> but i put them out there just in case i didn't uh, i had a feeling I, and I, I just i just touched briefly because because even though we didn't get to them you know, go to them. Uh, the 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 one would have been the Skynetter story. This was uh, uh, AI lawyers are smarter, faster, maybe cheaper than me pup meat puppet versions, and it's a story about how uh, they they did a test and showed that uh, AI programs are smarter at figuring out malols than than the best lawyers are. So. You know, down the road, you could have AI lawyers, which is kind of cool and kind of scary. It's kind of lulzy, but, you know, it's kind of yeah. thought-provoking. I think it's an yeah, You know, it, you mentioned that. Uh, you mentioned that story, and we just covered something very similar last week on the Tortured Report uh, about AI doctors. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess they did all too. these studies, and it was like the, the, the AI doctors, you know, they had like a 90 they, – they were able to uh, correctly identify bacterial infections – uh, much, yeah. much sooner than a human being at a 95 percent uh, 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 correct at a, at a rate of uh, 95 percent better than their human counterparts. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah, that that's the good side of AI. And then our Liberty Tech top story was going to be get to know yourself. That is your genomes thanks to the blockchain. So it's talking about using a blockchain to be able to process all the data for 
uh, investigating your genome so you can understand at a much more detailed, granular level exactly what your genomes are telling you could have, could identify problems early on, and, and maybe down the road you could be talking about uh, redesigning yourself. Now, I'm not actually scared of that. I think that's kind of cool, but it's also a little scary. But, I mean, what, what, I think it's what, creepy. What, I think, it's, I think great. it's creepy. I love it. I think it's creepy. I love it. It's uh, creepy. You're going to literally have a you're you're going to literally literally have a world where you know you have these elitist designer humans that look down upon you because you're a normie. Oh, you mean your parents <laughs> didn't design your genome? You're just a normie. Survival of the fittest. Bad news. <laughs> Anyway, there's a lot of great stuff going on out there. It's a lot of great news, good stories. It's it's not just this stuff. Although this, it it I think it's important to spend time on things like this and and just just don't let fear cripple you and throw you down a flight of stairs and leave you for dead. Uh, I mean, you you could be killed tomorrow by a bus hitting you. Uh, you don't know what the future holds, but, but you still have opportunities, areas in your life that you do have some control, some, some say in what happens. And in those areas, maximize your efforts. And with that, do you have anything else to say before we uh, shut down the lemon stand? Other than plugs? Not particularly. Oh, yeah, let's but do I'll our take plugs. moment to do some plugs. Oh, uh, yeah, we got to you... end with plugs, dude. <laughs> right, Absolutely. Uh, Friday night, 10 p.m. Eastern on LRN.FM. Tune in for the Torchwood Report. Uh, my co-host, Matthew Taylor, and I go over tech stuff. Um, it's generally, uh, you know, hopeful tech stuff, dystopian tech stuff. We cover all of it. Uh, you can also, uh, on Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Trump Revolution page, uh, do a show over there. Uh, pretty much uh, just going over the craziness of the week. And uh, talking about the uh, leftist insanity and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, tune What's in. What's the name of that show? There, that is the Sunday Night Niz. Uh, if you're not, if you're not on the Trump Revolution page, or you haven't liked that page, or you have an aversion uh, to all things Trump, uh, all you have to do is go up in your search bar there on Facebook and type hashtag Sunday Night Niz. Uh, it'll take you right to the show. Oh, that's good to know. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna use that idea. I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. You know, I am. I'm gonna start to incorporate that in my, especially for my headlines. You may have missed show. I'll use a hashtag. It makes it so, so much easier for people to find yeah, it. Yeah, it's great. You know, yeah. instead of saying I'll go to this Facebook page or that Facebook page, just give them a hashtag. Tell them look up the hashtag. All they have to do is click on it. it takes you right to it. That's a great idea. I'm gonna start incorporating that into my promotions. Probably starting next week. Uh, tomorrow, I will be doing headlines you may have missed. Hopefully, I'll be doing it at 12:30. I don't have any uh, pending. I don't have any like today. Headlines you may have missed was done at 2:30 because I had some morning stuff that I had to get done because it was a paying gig, and I like paying gigs, and it was pretty urgent that I had to get it done at that time. I couldn't avoid it, but I don't have anything like that scheduled, so I should be able to get the show done 12:30 p.m. Now tomorrow night is it's going to be I don't I don't even know what we're going to talk about yet. I haven't selected the stories, but I will be joined by Lou Sander of the Freedom Fiends and after we do the Is Dilly Thursday show, we're going to be doing something else which I'll I'll announce what that is at a later date, but uh something else that I will be sharing with everyone as well down the road. And with that, uh, thank everybody who joined us here today, and I especially thank the folks who took the co time to comment. Even Larry. Larry, I, I saw your comments. I didn't respond. Your comments, yeah. <laughs> I, I read them. I'll just say that I read your comments, Larry, and duly noted. And uh, everybody else, Jacob LaBelle and everybody else that commented, I think that's it, man. It's just Larry and Jacob. It was a Larry and Jacob show today, actually. Yeah. Hey, Larry and Jacob, man. You guys <laughs> nailed it, dudes, from completely different perspectives. But still, <laughs> uh, at any rate, thank you, everybody, for joining us here. Uh, I will have the audio version of the show available as 
soon as I possibly can, probably sometime tomorrow morning, it'll show up in the iTunes and the Stitcher. If you do a search for Is Daily, you'll find this show. And with that, good night, everybody.